It was time to go to the races. The whole crowd was moving across the railroad tracks and out on the prairie. On a pole set up there, the American flag fluttered against the sky. The sun was shining warm and a cool breeze was blowing. Beside the flagpole, a man rose up tall above the crowd. He was standing on something. The sound of talking died down and he could be heard speaking. Well, boys, he said, I'm not much good at public speaking, but today's the glorious fourth. This is the day and date when our forefathers cut loose from the despots of Europe. There wasn't many Americans at that time, but they wouldn't stand for any monarch tyrannizing over them. They had to fight the British regulars and their hired Hessians and the murdering, scalping, redskinned savages that those fine gold lace aristocrats turned loose on our settlements and paid for murdering and burning and scalping women and children. A few barefoot Americans had to fight the whole of them and lick them. And they did fight them and they did lick them. Yes, sir. We licked the British in 1776, and we licked them again in 1812. And we backed all the monarchies of Europe out of Mexico and off this continent less than 20 years ago. And by glory, yes, sir, by old glory right here waving over my head, any time the despots of Europe try to step on America's toes, we'll lick them again. Hooray, hooray, everybody shouted. Laura and Carrie and Pa yelled too, Hooray! Hooray! Well, so here we are today, the man went on. Every man jack of us, a free and independent citizen of God's country. The only country on earth where a man is free and independent. Today's the 4th of July, when this whole thing was started. And it ought to have a bigger, better celebration than this. We can't do much this year. Most of us are out here trying to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. By next year, likely some of us will be better off and able to chip in for a real big arousing celebration of Independence Day. Meantime, here we are. It's 4th of July, and on this day, somebody's got to read the Declaration of Independence. It looks like I'm elected. So hold your hats, boys. I'm going to read it. Lauren Carey knew the Declaration by heart, of course but it gave them a solemn, glorious feeling to hear the words. They took hold of hands and stood listening in the solemnly listening crowd. The stars and stripes were fluttering bright against the thin, clear blue overhead, and their minds were saying the words before their ears heard them. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bonds which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the, the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Then came the long and terrible list of the crimes of the king. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states. He has obstructed the administration of justice. He has made judges dependent on his will alone. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and to eat out their substance. He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coasts, burned our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. He is at this time transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, destruction, and tyranny already begun with circumstances of cruelty and perfidy scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy the head of a civilized nation. We... Therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress assembled, appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, do, in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are, and of right ought to be, free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved, and that as free and independent states, they have full right to levy war. 
and for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. No one cheered. It was more like a moment to say amen, but no one knew quite what to do. Then Paul began to sing. All at once, everyone was singing. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Long may our land be bright, with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God, our King. The crowd was scattering away then, but Laura stood stock still. Suddenly, she had a completely new thought. The declaration and the song came together in her mind, and she thought, God is America's king. She thought, Americans won't obey any king on earth. Americans are free. That means they have to obey their own consciences. No king bosses Pa. He has to be the boss of himself. Why, she thought, when I'm a little older, Pa and Ma will stop telling me what to do. And there isn't anyone else who has a right to give me orders. I will have to make myself be good. Her whole mind seemed to be lighted up by that thought. This is what it means to be free. It means you have to be good. Our Father's God, author of liberty, the laws of nature and of nature's God endow you with a right to life and liberty. Then you have to keep the laws of God, for God's law is the only thing that gives you a right to be free. Laura had no time to think any further. 